Hi, my name is Joe Shemaleski, and I'm a Senior Solutions Engineer here at Manta. Today, I'm here to show you how you can use Manta's automated data lineage platform to help achieve your organization's data governance goals. Data lineage, which is the process of tracing data's origins and movements through your organization's ecosystem, is a critical aspect of data governance. However, manually documenting and tracking lineage can be time-consuming and error-prone. Manta addresses this challenge by offering a streamlined solution that automates the lineage generation process, saving you valuable time and effort. With our platform, you can quickly identify sources feeding risk calculations, ensuring you meet financial regulations. It also aids in understanding the flow of privacy data, facilitating compliance with GDPR, CCPA, and other privacy requirements. Moreover, our application fosters data governance transparency and trust, empowering decision makers to confidently understand data origins and dependencies. It pinpoints areas requiring governance initiatives, helping you define the scope of your data governance efforts accurately. You can easily integrate the Manta-generated lineage insights with your enterprise governance platforms, promoting collaboration and informed decision making. Let's talk at a high level how Manta works. Through a code-based approach, Manta stitches lineage together by parsing ETL platforms, programming language, SQL databases, and business intelligence systems. It precisely documents lineage relations down to the column or element level, providing a clear and comprehensive view. The built-in visualizations offer a user-friendly experience catering to both technical experts and non-technical stakeholders alike. Without further ado, let's dive into a demonstration where we'll explore how our automated data lineage platform can empower your data governance journey. What we're looking at now is called the Manta Dataflow Viewer screen. This is where your end users will log in and see all the different assets that have been included within their scan for them to go ahead and select and visualize. On our left hand side of the screen, we have a repository tree view, which lists out all the different elements that we've included in our most recent scan, grouped by their resource type. If we wanted to locate an object of the DB2 resource, we could simply navigate to the DB2 folder, expand upon it, and see the different servers that we've scanned. Navigating to the servers, we can expose the different databases that we've included. Inside of the databases, We'll see our schemas, our tables, our columns, etc. Also included in the Manta Flow Viewer home screen is a search text box where you can look for your different elements based on their object name. For the first visualization though, what I would like to find is my MS SQL resources rep client table. So we're gonna navigate into the server we've connected to, the database, and then the schema, and then locate my rep client table. Once I've found this, I'm gonna expand upon it and then see the list of all the different columns inside of my rep client table and locate the ones of particular interest, such as customer name. By clicking and then dragging into my selected objects for lineage box over here on the right hand side, I now can go ahead and click on this visualize button to generate my lineage diagram. What Manta has done here is that it has gone into our repository and located this specific asset and then located all the other assets within the repository which share a data flow relationship with that selected element. It's then visualized that data flow for us on our screen, showing us all the way from source to target data movements. So how we would read this visualization is we have a number of these different boxes that are connected together with a number of these different lines. Each one of these boxes is representing a different object within the data lineage flow. These boxes can be representing anything from relational databases, tables, schemas, columns, uh, to reporting tools, reports, charts, graphs, or even ETL tool jobs and components. Really anything that stores, moves, transforms, or views data will be represented on our screen by one of these boxes. The relationships those boxes have with one another regarding the data movements from one resource to the next are then represented by the lines on our screen. 
You may notice that some of these boxes have different color themes being applied to them. These color themes are indicating to the users that the boxes are representing different technology types. So my green set of boxes here right in the center of our screen is representing the MS SQL technology. This lime green set of boxes over here on the right hand side is representing Excel workbook that we've scanned. And over here on my far left hand side, these red set of boxes are denoting the Oracle technology type. So on this one screen, I have two different relational databases as well as a reporting tool visualized within the graph. With Manta's approach of scanning the metadata or code level of detail, we're able to connect the cross technology data movements together without requiring any type of manual intervention. So your users just simply set up the connections, run a scan, and then they'll be able to log into the viewer application and be presented with something very similar to what we're seeing here. Now that we've seen how Manta can document data lineage flow within our ecosystem, let's see how we can utilize this information for uncovering hidden dependencies within our data ecosystem. To do this, we're going to navigate back to our Manta home screen by cl clicking on this home icon in the upper left hand corner. Once back in the Manta Flow Viewer's home screen, the first thing we we'll want to do is remove our previously selected asset from our selected for lineage objects box. Next, we're going to take a different approach to finding the particular asset of interest. We're going to actually search for it by its name. Let's enter loan underscore customer underscore person. And here is the suggested uh, search criteria right there. We have a hundred results returned back to us, so let's filter this down to only show me results from my resource of MSSQL, and I'm only interested in seeing tables. This first object on the returns asset list here is exactly what I'm looking for. All I need to now do is just click on this plus icon, and I'll get added to my selected for lineage assets list. Next, I'll click on this little icon right here to adjust the visualization parameters. We only care about uh, the different sources which feed into this particular table, so we're going to do backwards lineage diagram generation. We want to see indirect lineage flows, and we'll talk a bit about what this means in a second. And we want to see everything, so I'm going to set this to show everything. With these properly defined, now all I need to do is go ahead and click on the visualize button. Once in the diagram, we can see the loan customer person table centered on our screen. Let's click this little plus icon to expose all the different columns within it. Then we'll zoom out a touch and pan over to the left hand side to see all the different sources this uh, data set's coming from. Within this view, we can see that there's two Oracle tables that the information is being sourced from. My CD underscore country table as well as my loan customer person table. Once expanded, you might notice that there's these new lineage lines being exposed to us in this blue dashed format. The blue dashed lineage lines indicate that there's an indirect data lineage movement coming from the connected asset. For those of you unfamiliar with the term indirect data lineage, what this refers to are assets in your repository which indirectly affect the data movements from other elements in your ecosystem. Good examples of this would be where clauses or case statements. Really, if you have a select statement that has some type of logical expression after it, which includes additional data from other resources, that additional set of data would be indirectly affecting the flow of your selected elements. Manta represents these types of data movements with this blue lineage line. If we click on this lineage line, you'll see that it's being leveraged as a filter. This filter is coming from this Informatica Power Center job. If I click on this asset right here and expand its elements details out here, we can see the query that's being leveraged. Within the attribute value pop-out menu here, I can see that there's a join condition coming from my CD country table on its country name column. So data is only moving downstream, which has been selected when this join condition is true. 
In this scenario, country name is not actually moving downstream, but rather filtering the flow from the loan customer person select statement before it moves into my loan customer person table here in my MS SQL resource. Within this same visualization, I can see there's additional steps coming from my SSIS ETL tool, such as this clean data component, which if I click upon it, I can view the expression, which essentially is looking for null values and replacing them. So within this one diagram, I am able to locate all the different sources for my loan customer person table, understand both the physical movement of data as well as the indirect data lineage movements, and also get a better understanding for the different levels of data cleaning or transformation which is being applied to the data prior to being placed in the loan customer person table. Manta exposing not only just the physical data lineage movements within my data flow, but also the indirect data lineage movements helps me to uncover potentially hidden assets within my ecosystem which have impacts to my loan customer person's data sets. Couple this with the information coming from my ETL tools transformations and cleaning components, I have a complete understanding of how my data is being placed into my loan customer persons and I can leverage that accordingly. Now that we've uncovered our hidden data dependencies and can view how our data is being transformed throughout our data flow, let's see how we can leverage Manta to see how our system evolves over time. To do this, let's go back to our previous screen by clicking on the Manta Home icon. Once in here, we'll want to clear out our selected objects again. And for this visualization, we're going to use our customers report. This is in the SSRS resource. Add it to our selected elements here. We're going to use a feature that we haven't yet seen, which is called Compare Revisions. To do that, we'll click on this little Compare Revisions button, and it'll expose a drop down menu where we can choose a previous state and time to compare with our current state. Let's choose revision number 15. Now we'll want to adjust the visualization parameters as we want to see both directions of data flow. We we'll want to expose a low level of detail, no longer want to see indirect data lineage flows. Everything else we're going to leave the same though, and we'll go ahead and click on visualize. Once Manta has generated our diagram, we'll notice that we see something a little bit different than what we normally are presented with. No longer do we see the colored boxes representing the each technology, but we see all these different boxes which are grayed out. This gray color theme tells us that these objects have had no modifications made to them when comparing the older revision, or the older state of the repository, with the current revision. But you'll notice that Manta is drawing our attention to these assets over here on my far left hand side by showing these active tags with the plus green icon and the red slash icon and the colored lineage line. If I expand on this DWH schema and my CRM client table, we'll see two groupings of columns. One grouping of column with the red font coloring and the slash icon and another grouping of columns with the green font coloring and the plus icon. The red and the slash is telling me that these columns have been deleted or modified, while the green and the plus are telling me that these columns have been added or updated. So quickly and easily I can see that my date underscore birth, name underscore first, and name underscore last columns have been renamed to B date, F name, and L name. This means if I have any downstream dependencies which are sourcing from this table referencing the old naming conventions, I'll have a broken data pipeline. Manta can track and archive all of these different changes within its repository, allowing users to not only go back to previous states, but also to compare those previous states with the current states, as we're seeing here, for helping your users to identify potential changes to the ecosystem, which may cause data discrepancies or broken data pipelines. This information can be quite valuable when meeting regulatory compliances. And that concludes our demo today. We've walked through how you can use Manta to quickly meet your regulatory commitments faster, increase trust in data pipelines, and how you can identify those most critical areas where governance initiatives are needed. 
We did this by tracing sensitive data throughout our environment, uncovering hidden dependencies, and understanding how our data pipelines change over time. Now we can use this information to guide our governance initiatives. Thank you very much for watching. For further information, please visit us on the web at manta.io.